what you can do in a cold January winter in Japan. You're listening to the Daidokoro Video Podcast. Hi, I'm Pat Tokuyama, and you're about to discover some of the tastiest ways to feed your mind, body, and soul. A pharmacist by training, you may know me as the founder of All Day I Eat Like a Shark, the food blog, YouTube channel, or as author of several Japanese cookbooks. If you desire to live a healthy life and are looking for a different way forward with a hunger for growth, then this video podcast is for you. Daidokoro is a Japanese term for kitchen. And I'm glad you're here. With each episode, we're going to be bringing clarity to your cooking by blending Japanese tradition and life lessons into bite sized bits that even a shark would enjoy. Ready to make some magic happen? So, today I'm going to continue my little trip recap、uh, from my six month adventure in Asia,、uh, specifically starting off with the first portion in Japan. So, as you may know, Japan gets extremely cold in the wintertime. And a few of the things that you might be able to do in Japan during the winter may or may not be your cup of tea. So, we started off in Tokyo. We stayed with my sister、um, while we visited our family. Then we had some family in、uh, Yokohama as well as just outside of Tokyo in Ichikawa. And we celebrated her birthday there with a delicious fruit tart. And then we took a day trip to Yokohama. Actually, I guess it was during the night to、uh, get on the Ferris wheel and just get outside of Tokyo for a little bit and enjoy some of the winter lights. Light decorations are kind of a thing in Japan during the winter time. And、uh, it's sort of like Christmas lights in the US, but these are、uh, throughout the winter. You may be able to go and see some sort of a light display. And the way that we did that, of course, was taking advantage of the JR Rail Pass. So, the JR Rail Pass、uh, gives you full access to all of the JR systems or the rail network,、uh, which is pretty convenient depending on where you're going. And、uh, our first stop was in Yokohama. So, the JR Rail Pass, if you haven't heard of it before or aren't sure if it's for you, is basically a 7, 14, or 21 day rail pass with which you can use all the JR lines, so Japan Rail, and get around Japan very easily. Train is one of the best ways to get around and travel,、um, not only in Japan, but other countries as well, for several reasons. The first is going to be that it's much less hassle than going to an airport, going through security, and all that stuff. The second is going to be that it's convenient. So, usually in Japan, at least, there are major train stations in most of the cities and they'll get you to where you need to go, especially as a tourist. Third is going to be comfort. I think taking a train is much more comfortable than flying, especially if you're flying in coach. So, that's another reason. And if you are going to be using the rail pass in Japan and you're flying into Tokyo and you're going to be going south, I think one of the things that you should consider is sitting on the right side so that you have a view of Mount Fuji as you go south towards Kyoto. Or if you're going north from Kyoto to Tokyo, then you can sit on the left side so that you'll also get that view. After Yokohama, we went to Mount Takao for A little bit of a winter hike. So it was covered in snow. And if you are going to be going there in the wintertime, you're going to need ice spikes. So ice spikes are those metal things that you can clamp to your shoes so that you don't slip on ice. So make sure you get that if you are going to be doing that activity so you don't slip and hurt yourself. So it's just a short、uh, Mount Takao, if you haven't heard of it, is about, I think it was about an hour and a half by train outside of Tokyo. And you can actually see Mount Fuji from the top of the mountain. So that was pretty cool. At least when the weather is clear. And it was nice to get out of the city into nature and see the snow and walk around for a bit. So, the next thing that we did was go to Nara.、Uh, Nara is famous for their deer as well as temples. And then during the wintertime, they have a very big fire festival. So, it's on Wakakusa Yama, which means young grass mountain. And they set that whole mountain on fire. They also have some fireworks as well as other activities during the day with which you can enjoy the festivities. And that was one of the main reasons why we decided to go there for the fire festival and the fireworks, because I love fireworks. And then after we finished in Nara,、uh, we visited some of the temples like Todaiji, which is a really Massive temple. If you've never seen it in person, it's probably going to surprise you the first time you see it because it's just massive. It's huge. So, pictures don't do it justice. You got to see it in person. After we went to the fire festival, we also went down to Hiroshima for okonomiyaki. So, if you didn't know, Hiroshima is famous for、uh, okonomiyaki. They make a little bit of a different version of okonomiyaki as compared to other. Cities or regions like Osaka, for example. And it's one of the things that you should definitely try, especially if you're in the area. There's actually a Okonomiyaki Machi, or I guess you could call it like a village, in the train station. So it's super easy to access, and they have a bunch of different Okonomiyaki stalls with which you can enjoy it. And if you didn't know what Okonomiyaki is, it's basically a savory pancake full of vegetables, plus or minus meat or seafood, with a savory sauce drizzled over it and other toppings, depending on how you order it. And it's very delicious. 
easy to make at home as well. So if you haven't heard of it before or want to give it a try and you aren't able to travel there just yet, make sure to check out the link in the show notes for a recipe from my blog. So after we explored Hiroshima for a bit, we also went to Miyajima, which is famous for the Red Gate, or Tori. And uh, we visited that for a day, half a day, I believe. Before we went back to Kansai, we stopped in Kobe to meet some friends. And then we went to Osaka to eat. And then back to Tokyo before we were able to fly up to Hokkaido for the snow festival. So in the next episode, we'll talk a little bit more about what we did in Hokkaido as well as what you can do on your next trip. So in the meantime, if you have any questions or suggestions for this episode, what you could do in the winter time, let me know with a voicemail or a comment. And hopefully these ideas will be helpful for you as you plan your next trip to Japan in the winter. Thanks for joining us today from wherever you're watching or listening from. And if you haven't yet, it'd mean a lot to me if you could share your thoughts in a review on iTunes to let me know what you think of this new video podcast. Um, then I can take that feedback and make things better for next time. And to celebrate the launch of this brand new video podcast, we are going to be doing a little giveaway. All you got to do to enter is subscribe and send us a screenshot of your review. Make sure to check out the link in the description or show notes for all the details. And I'd encourage you to share this with a friend or a loved one because if you've gotten value out of it, chances are they will too. Want to try cooking Japanese food at home from scratch? Head over to alldayie.com slash aisatsu, A-I-S-A-T-S-U, to get started today. And if you're new here, make sure to check out alldayie.com slash daidokoro, D-A-I-D-O-K-O-R-O, for all the show notes, bonus materials, resources, and more. 